Hi everybody and thank you for joining me in this new short video presentation from ARIA EPITAC series. I hope you will enjoy it and join me here in my future video presentations. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. Okay, the today's patient is a 50-year-old man with a history of frequent palpitations, no family history of sudden cardiac death, no syncope and persyncope. He presented to another hospital with white QRS complex tachycardia. The MRI was reported to be normal and we will later see the MRI of this patient. But let's look, have a look at the ECG. In the ECG, we see a white QRS complex tachycardia with left bundle branch block pattern, superior axis one positive. So at the first, we have to think about ventricular tachycardia as a possible diagnosis. And when we think of such a ventricular tachycardia, we always have to think about arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy as a possible diagnosis in our differential diagnosis. Of course, with this, with this morphology, we have to think about Maheim accessory pathway and also idiopathic VTs like VTs originating from the moderator band. Now let's go further. And there is one interesting point in the management of this patient in another hospital. So as I read uh, the discharge letter from that hospital, I saw that in the emergency room, they gave the patient the adenosine to terminate the tachycardia. And it was very interesting for me because the patient received adenosine after that, he became hemodynamically unstable and they had to cardiovert them. And they refer to this European guideline and it's very interesting to see that in these ESC guidelines for the management of patients with supraventricular tachycardia, we have an algorithm on treatment of patients with white QRS complex tachycardia. And as you can see here, the first question is, you have white QRS complex tachycardia, is it hemodynamically stable? If the answer is yes, first try to use the vagal maneuver and after that adenosine if it is ineffective. But we have to keep in mind that for example, in our case, the patient has a white QRS, comp white QRS complex tachycardia, he's older than 35, and it means that the possibility that this tachycardia is a VT is more than 90%. So I think this guideline needs some correction because we don't need to manage every white QRS complex tachycardia, which is hemodynamically stable first with the vagal maneuver and after that adenosine. And if adenosine is effective, then go to antiarrhythmic medication. Of course, we can still do it if we are sure that this white QRS complex tachycardia is a supraventricular tachycardia and not generally as a white QRS complex tachycardia. So here we see the baseline ECG of the patient. What is very important to see is the T-wave inversion that we see in precordial lead. In the next slide, now here we see the MRI of the patient and this is very important. Uh, in our case, the imaging helped us to confirm the diagnosis of arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, a ventricular tachycardia with superior axis, T-wave inversion in precordial lead, and now the MRI uh, make the diagnosis complete. But let's look at a very important study recently published in uh, European Heart Journal about the current use of cardiac magnetic imaging in tertiary centers for the diagnosis of cardiomyopathy. As you can see here, in tertiary referral center, only 30% on average, only 30% of the patients received a cardiac MRI. And it's really sad because imaging can help us to, to make the diagnosis, to locate the scar, have a differential diagnosis, and also make a plan for management of the patient. So this study shows that the MRI Will, uh, is used only in one third of patients in tertiary referral centers across Europe. But there is, only, there is one other important point in this study, and that there are a huge difference between different countries on using the cardiac MRI. For example, let's have a look here. On the top, we see Greece and Great Britain with and in these two countries, more than uh, around 63% and 56% of the patients received the cardiac MRI in tertiary referral centers bandwidth. But when we look at the data from Germany, it's only 11%. And more, it means around 90% of the patients don't receive MRI. And uh, as in our patient, this is very important. 
for making the diagnosis at least. So, before finishing this patient, I would like also to introduce an interesting study recently published on prediction of sudden cardiac death in patients with arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. This was a very interesting study. We know that syncope ejection fraction of the right ventricle prior sustained ventricular arrhythmia and even non-sustained ventricular tachycardia are predictors of ventricular arrhythmia in patients with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. But in this large study, they showed this parameter do not predict sudden cardiac death or life-threatening ventricular arrhythmia. Some other factors like younger age, male gender, number of leads with T-wave inversion and PVC burden predicted sudden cardiac death in patients with MRI or life-threatening ventricular arrhythmia in these patients. So, at the end, I hope you enjoyed this short case presentation showing important two important points regarding management of patients with white QRS tachycardia and also using cardiac MRI in patients with cardiomyopathy and ventricular tachycardia for diagnosis. Once again, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I would like to invite you joining me in my future video presentations. And thank you.